Okay. Good morning, everyone. It's my pleasure to welcome you to the ninth edition of Coffee and Conversations, hosted by the Wolfsonian, uh, Wolfsonian Public Humanities Lab at Florida International University. My name is David Rifkind, and I'm an Associate Professor of Architecture uh, at FIU. The Wolfsonian Public Humanities Lab created this weekly series as part of its digital and remote programming in response to the novel coronavirus. Coffee and Conversations is a remote, informal chat with directors and leaders of museums and other cultural institutions to discuss how they and their institutions are confronting the global pandemic. As we enter our third month of Coffee and Conversations and our fourth month of re remote teaching and learning, we face a growing number of concerns. In addition to the health crisis brought on by the pandemic and the economic crisis brought on by the response to the pandemic, we now face a social and political crisis. We're going to address that subject in future episodes, but for now, we have an opportunity to do something we haven't yet done in this series, which is leave the confines of Miami-Dade County and the Western Hemisphere and talk with our friend and colleague, Matteo Focasati, curator of the Wolfsoniana Study Center in Genoa. Matteo, it is such a pleasure to welcome you to Coffee and Conversations. Ciao. Thank you, David. Hi to everyone uh, and sorry for the late. <laughs> it's my fault. <laughs> it's technical problems, but uh, here we are. I don't have the just uh, background uh, that we choose, uh, but uh, this is my library uh, that is fine. <laughs> it's understandable. All of these episodes are shot with people at home. I'm sitting in my dining room right now. Um, and I've got, I should just explain the virtual background that I've got up is from a collection that the Wolfsonian in Miami Beach has made available online uh, through their website. And they have a number of these fantastic pieces from their collection that they've made available to the public for use as Zoom backgrounds. But so, Matteo, can you introduce our audience to the Wolfsoniana? Yeah, the Wolfsoniana was founded uh, in uh, 1987 uh, as the Italian branch of the Wolfsonian in Miami. Uh, in 1998, uh, uh, Mickey Wilson uh, signed uh, a trust with the public, uh, the local public entities, uh, to uh, to donate. Uh, the, the target was to donate the collection uh, to the city of Genoa. And uh, the donation uh, was in uh, 2007, but in the meanwhile, uh, in the 2005, we opened a, a museum in the parks of Nervi, uh, close to other three important museum devoted to the art, uh, uh, the visual art of the 19th and 20th century. Uh, two years ago, uh, two, two years later, uh, in or so almost 2008-2009, we opened uh, uh, the uh, Warsonana Study Center at uh, the Palazzo Ducale, and uh, and five years uh, ago, Palazzo Ducale incorporated the collection and uh, the museum, and now we are part of the Palazzo Ducali and uh, we have the opportunity to organize uh, exhibition in our, in our museum, the Wolfsoniana in Nervid, but also in the Palazzo Ducale that is the uh, main uh, exhibition space in the town. It's a, a big constal uh, that organizes uh, exhibitions but also conference, festivals, etc. Great. So this is the story. <laughs> And can you tell us how the Wolfsoniana has operated since Italy began its quarantine? What kind of events have you organized online? So the, oh, okay, so the quarantine uh, stopped uh, all uh, our activities and, uh, and we are now, because the lockdown is over in Italy, uh, almost, and uh, and we tried to uh, restart with our activities, and uh, the idea uh, was to reopen uh, uh, at the end of uh, this month or at the beginning of next one, because the problem is the disinfection of the rooms and of the conditioning system. And we have uh, also to equip uh, the structure with all the equipment requested by the 
sanitary emergency. They are very strict uh, procedures uh, uh, to uh, open to the public and uh, we will have uh, um, quota free access uh, in the next future. Uh, that it means that we will have uh, uh, to count the public before to open our doors. So in any way, in, during the period of the lockdown, uh, we are closed and we did not organize uh, online program, but the Ducal Palace, and we are part of the Ducal Palace, organized uh, several programs related to continue uh, its activities. And uh, in fact, uh, we organized uh, a virtual exhibition to show important masterpiece uh, uh, painted uh, or sculptured by uh, Genovese artists. And mm -hmm. uh, these works of art uh, are in uh, the most important international museums. And it's a, a kind of a virtual exhibition that we offer to our public. Another thing that the Ducal Palace uh, did was to uh, show online all the uh, most important conference uh, or meetings that we did uh, in the recent past. Or for instance, when uh, a few weeks ago, Germano Celant died, mm -hmm. He, he took uh, a wonderful conference uh, a few, two years ago at uh, the Ducal Palace and I introduced uh, him uh, to this conference and we showed the video of this conference. That is what uh, we did uh, during the period. Yeah, and we should mention too that Germano Celant is a phenomenal art historian, critic and curator, major curator. Yeah, yeah. And, One of and the major intellectuals who was lost uh, in the COVID. And he, he was Genovese, uh, as uh, you know, and, uh, and uh, he organized uh, two important uh, exhibition in uh, Genoa uh, in the last years, especially in uh, 2004, when Genoa was uh, European capital of culture. Yes. He organized a big exhibition that probably you know very well, uh, art and architecture that was uh, a great event for the town, but even for the rest of the world. Yeah. No, it was a real loss. Uh, he and Vittorio Gregotti, we, we've lost some really remarkable figures in Italian art and architecture in just the last few months. Yeah. I guess one other question then that I have for you is what exhibitions and events did you have planned before? And how did the crisis change those plans? So this was a big trouble because um, uh, we plan to organize, uh, uh, so, so first of all, uh, we have to close before the time uh, our exhibition at the, the Ducal Palace. Mm -hmm. This exhibition was uh, entitled uh, 20s in Italy, the age of uncertainty, and uh, it opened uh, last October in occasion of the Mickey Walson birthday, and, uh, and uh, he organized a lot of uh, uh, festivities uh, in occasion of the opening of this exhibition. Mm. And, uh, and we have to close uh, before the time. The other thing that uh, um, we have to change was that uh, we plan to organize and to open uh, in March an exhibition about the Mita. Mita is mm -hmm. uh, the manufacturer of uh, tapestry, textiles, uh, and we had an exhibition uh, at uh, Wolsonian in Miami uh, yeah. two years ago. Uh, and um, we plan to do an, another exhibition of, on this subject uh, to the historic collection in London. That is uh, a small but an important museum of uh, Italian art and then invited us uh, to organize this exhibition. So now we postpone the, the opening. Probably we, we, will, we are trying to open this exhibition next fall, you know, in September, October. And uh, in the meanwhile, uh, we are working uh, on uh, the catalog 
and uh, to the didactic panels. So we continue to work on this exhibition and uh, we are uh, always in contact with the director to try to figure out when we can organize the exhibition because we have the problem with the COVID in Italy, but uh, even uh, in uh, Great Britain and London. And, uh, and uh, concerning the Walsoniana, uh, so the museum, uh, we, we had uh, uh, planned to open uh, uh, an exhibition in March again, and, uh, and we postponed this exhibition for the next fall. And it will be about uh, a futurist painter, uh, King Castello, who was a Genovese artist related to the um, Genovese futurist movement. And, uh, and he did some paintings that uh, remember to us the Aereo Pittura, but it was before the, the beginning of the Aereo Pittura. And uh, this is a very uh, nice uh, exhibition that we, will, we are working on, on and probably it, it will open uh, next October. Um, in the meanwhile, we, we, when we, we will open again the, the museum, we will uh, uh, open the, we maintain open the exhibition on uh, Pacetti, Ivo Pacetti, who was uh, uh, an important ceramist, but also painter, photographer, and uh, he fell in love with the Futurist movement. And, uh, and he was part of the Marinetti group uh, mm -hmm. and he participated to important exhibition uh, of the Futurist movement. And in this period, we, uh, we had now ready a book devoted to this artist. And as soon as we will open the museum, we will try to present to the, to the public even the book. And, oh, phenomenal. Uh, yeah, this is another, uh, it's connected to the, the Walsoniana. And um, what else? So, and we have to raise also another exhibition at the Ducal Palace. Mm -hmm. uh, it's uh, an exhibition, uh, uh, a ret retrospective exhibition uh, for uh, Raimondo Sirotti, who was a, a Genovese painter who died uh, uh, three years uh, ago, very popular in Genoa, but even in Italy, and uh, in the town uh, won't commemorate uh, him with this big exhibition, a retrospective at the, the Ducal Palace, and uh, another exhibition at the Museum of Contemporary Art. At the end, we decided to open the uh, exhibition at the Museum of Contemporary Art this June, but to postpone to the next June 2021 uh, to uh, the Ducal Palace. But the catalog of the exhibition is it's, uh, it's ready and uh, it will be presented uh, this June with the works of art that we select for the exhibition to the Ducal Palace. Yeah, anyway, this. Yeah, and before I move on, I just wanted, because you're talking about reopening uh, the Wolfsoniana and the Ducal Palace, um, what are your plans for opening? Um, how are you the moving opening, For the opening at the Wolfsoniana or Ducal Palace? You see? Well, I guess both, I'm curious about both. Okay, the, the Ducal Palace is, uh, it opened uh, two weeks ago, um, mm. because, uh, we, the Ducal Palace uh, start before with uh, his exhibition space uh, with the disinfection uh, of the um, uh, air conditioning system and uh, everything that uh, I told you is necessary for the equipments. And, uh, and, uh, and there was for one week, uh, the, the a short, uh, a, a review of the exhibition about Bensky that uh, be began uh, in uh, last uh, January and uh, uh, now it's over. And uh, mm -hmm. next week uh, we will open um, an experiment exhibition 
it's uh, uh, what we call uh, uh, individual exhibition because just one only person can visit uh, uh, this exhibition. In this exhibition, there are only two paintings, but two masterpiece. One is uh, the uh, a painting of uh, uh, Claude Monet. Uh, it belongs to the Musée Marmottan in Paris. Uh, it was painted in Giverny uh, during the First World War, and it shows the, the garden and the lake. And, uh, and uh, this painting will be connected with another painting of the same period, so a few years before, by Giovanni Boldini, who was a, an, an Italian painter who lived in Paris and he, who was connected with the Impressionism and with the Art Nouveau movement uh, and uh, uh, even with uh, uh, Claude Monet. And uh, the visitors will uh, visit the exhibition alone or in a small group of families and they will have five minutes to stay alone in a room with these two paintings. And outside of this room, they can uh, watch uh, two videos about the history of uh, Monet and uh, to read uh, the chronology. And uh, so th this, this will be the, another experiment. This is for the Ducal Palace. For the uh, <coughs> Warsoniana, we will try to open at the end of this month or at the beginning of July and uh, and we will uh, present the Pacetti book and catalog mm. and uh, and we we will try to uh, organize something related to the Pacetti exhibition terrific that's really it's really wonderful to hear about you with having plans to reopen uh, so soon uh, as you know the United States is some weeks behind Italy. And so we're still in a state where we're trying to figure out just exactly how to reopen cultural institutions. Um, and it's hard enough to reopen uh, in a museum that displays objects. You can imagine how difficult it is for our friends in the performing arts right now. Um, so another question I have for you too is, what's the most surprising thing that's happened in all this time for you and for the staff as far as the quarantine experience? So the current experience, so it's, it's not related to professional uh, uh, life, but to the professional, to the, uh, my own private life, because I stay at home, uh, no, uh, never in the, my life stay so long uh, at home. Mm -hmm. And uh, we, we did uh, smart working, of course, uh, but it's totally different. Uh, we usually travel, uh, we have a lot of meetings, and uh, I try to learn uh, to use Zoom, not to <laughs> very well as I demonstrate today, but uh, anyway, I try, and, uh, and we have every day a Zoom meeting uh, or Skype meeting uh, with the rest of the staff, uh, and, um, it's a, it, it was a strange experience. Unfortunately, uh, this uh, uh, sanitary emergency, uh, it's uh, more hard uh, for people who work uh, in the museums and the tourism uh, and uh, it's not a really good period. And even because, uh, so it's true that now we are opening uh, we are trying to open in, in Italy the museums uh, and uh, the cultural institutions, but the problem is that it's not possible to, to take conference uh, uh, and uh, we have to have uh, uh, an access to the visitor, uh, not uh, as uh, like in the past. Uh, and. Uh, we, if we open an exhibition, we don't have uh, the inauguration that usually it's uh, an important event uh, and, uh, and it's also difficult to organize the press uh, uh, conference. So anyway, it, it's, it's a very strange period for us uh, and uh, yeah. for the rest of the war. 
And one other question I have for you is what kind of long-term changes do you see for the Wolfsoniana as a result of the COVID crisis? I don't know. Uh, it's, uh, it's very difficult now to, uh, to, to plan uh, our next future. Uh, we, we will try. Uh, and uh, the idea is to, for instance, to open uh, the our exhibition in London, but I'm not sure that I will can go there to organize the installation because uh, it's uh, it, I, it is not really clear if our borders are open or not with uh, other uh, countries in Europe. For instance, yes. we, we, we can go, we cannot go to Austria or Greece in this period, but we can go to France uh, and uh, to mm -hmm. Uh, Croatia. Uh, so it, it depends. Uh, any uh, country decide uh, uh, itself. Anyway, for the Wolsoniana, we will, we, our target is uh, to organize this exhibition at the uh, London uh, Asterisk Collection. Mm -hmm. this, it will be the first step. Second step to, to try to organize uh, the, this exhibition uh, on the futurist uh, painter Kim Castello. And yes. then what we would like to do is to organize an exhibition of Wolsoniana, Wolsoniana uh, objects at the Ducal Palace. Fantastic. Maybe in the, in the next future, prob probably next year, we we, we, we or uh, as soon as possible, we would like to organize another. I, 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 I tell we because it's Gianni Franzoni and me who are the, the two curators of the Wolsoniana. Uh, we would like to, to, to organize another uh, exhibition like uh, uh, the 20th in Italy that was uh, an exhibition with starting from the Wolsoniana with, uh, but with other loans uh, from everywhere in the world. Fantastic. Yeah. And so uh, we always leave the last 10 minutes of these chats for questions from our audience. And we have a few um, from people that you know. Um, I'll start with Silvia Barasione, who used to be your colleague at the Wolfsoniana, yeah, who also is a native of Genoa and has been working uh, here at the Wolfsonian in Miami Beach now for some years. Um, Sylvia wanted to ask more about the exhibition that you just mounted um, on the 1920s and that you made, uh, that you talked about earlier. Um, and especially, she wanted to know um, if it brought new visitors to the Wolfsoniana. The, 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 with the exhibition, the Pacetti exhibition, you mean? Oh, no, the 1920s exhibition. Uh, the exhibition on the 1920s that you opened in October. Ah, okay, in the, in, uh, in, at the Ducal Palace, not yes. the... Yes, yeah. So the, that exhibition was a great success, uh, and uh, we have a lot of public. Uh, and um, and what is uh, also very important, uh, we have uh, incredible press release, uh, and it, it it was uh, no, it was fine, and, and we we were so happy about this exhibition. Unfortunately, mm -hmm. we have to close uh, it. Uh, uh, 20 days uh, before uh, the, yeah. Oh, that's unfortunate. Yes, and uh, now we, we sent back all the loans uh, to the mm. museums or the private collectors and, uh, and it's over. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I mean, it's always sad when an exhibition comes down, yeah. but this in particular, I can imagine. Yeah, it there, was very were there sad. Part that, were there parts of the exhibition that dealt specifically with the aftermath of the uh, the flu epidemic or pandemic from 1918? So, so what do you mean? The oh, like the, basically the response to the gigantic flu pandemic from the end of the First World War, when you know there was a sudden interest in hygiene, especially in modern architecture in the 1920s, the design of furniture, things like so, that. So, so, so this exhibition was focused on the uh, paintings and, and sculpture, and uh, it was uh, it was a Wolfsoniana exhibition in terms of that uh, we tried to reconstruct the 
climate, the atmosphere of the period uh, with the works of art. That is uh, a topic of the uh, Wilsoniana philosophy. And, mm. uh, and uh, the academic uh, environment uh, and uh, the, the, uh, was very interested to this uh, lecture of the period, mm. uh, even because uh, usually uh, we, when we think to the 20s, we think to the Art Deco period, uh, to the Roaring 20s, but in Italy it was a, a terrible period with the beginning of the fascism uh, and yeah. uh, another epidemic, uh, the Spaniola, uh, that was uh, terrible uh, as well as the COVID or more. Uh, and. Uh, and the violence in the towns and the crisis in the 1929 after the uh, bankruptcy of, of Wall Street. Okay, that it was a horrible period. In fact, we entitled the age of uncertainty and, uh, and it's something similar to the uh, atmosphere of today, <laughs> the present time. It, well, it's an example of history being prophetic. Yeah. I do have a, qu a couple of questions from my colleagues here at the Wolfsonian Public Humanities Lab. Um, our deputy director, Julio uh, Capo, asks um, for you to just clarify the relationship between the Wolfsonian and the Wolfsoniana. So uh, we continued, we are cousin, <laughs> and uh, we continue to, uh, to have a relationship. And uh, Silvia uh, is part uh, of these relationships. And, if you know, so we told before, we organized the exhibition, the meet exhibition two years ago, and, uh, and we have a continuous change uh, of information uh, and uh, through the, and the, if uh, also uh, in the acquisition. Uh, mm -hmm. And uh, so, yes, we are, loan uh, we are distant but uh, uh, but we are still uh, part of the uh, same project and uh, since Mickey Walson it's always part uh, of the two entities the uh, Walsonian and the Walsonian he is uh, the link uh, uh, that created the relationships and uh, the connection of the two institutions that's great. And our uh, director, uh, Rebecca Friedman, wanted me to ask you about um, basically about things larger than the museums. Um, how are things in Italy now? Because you were hit much earlier than us and, and in a really devastating fashion. So the, the, the museum, uh, no, the museum opened uh, later, respect the, 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 the museum in uh, Miami. So you, you want to know how many... Oh, just how things are in Italy. Um, I know that you've been under a much stricter quarantine to some degree um, than what we've been experiencing in the US. For example, you have not been able to travel uh, interregionally uh, within Italy. So we're curious just how things are. Yeah, in no, no, we had the trouble with uh, the, 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 the connection uh, to the region because the lockdown uh, stopped uh, the connection with the, the, the region until uh, the last week. And uh, in fact, uh, now we can uh, travel. And uh, this creates problems, uh, especially to organize uh, uh, shipments uh, uh, through the other museums uh, and, uh, and to organize, uh, of course, uh, or, the normal activities. Yeah, it was a big trouble. <laughs> yeah, well, it's really encouraging to hear that so many institutions are reopening. I just got an email this morning from the Barberini Corsini uh, Gallery in Rome that they're reopening next Thursday. And that's, uh, that's really- Yeah, but un unfortunately, see. some uh, in the event or exhibition or institution are still closed. And you know, the uh, architecture uh, Biennale was postponed for to the next uh, year, and yeah. uh, and uh, even uh, in the big town like uh, so, I mean, uh, art town like uh, Venice or Milan or Turin or Rome, uh, some uh, museums uh, had problems. 
because one of the problem is to organize a new uh, concept of visit. And uh, I think that uh, people now is uh, bored about a virtual exhibition. <laughs> and uh, and I, I think that people is anxious to, to visit uh, personally uh, the exhibition, but it will be not like in the past because, uh, I mean, just for the moment, because it's very difficult to uh, to plan uh, uh, and to organize uh, the, the the visitors with all the restrictions uh, imposed by the uh, sanitary emergency. Yes. Well, Matteo, we're at the end of our time here today, and I want to thank you on behalf of my colleagues at the Wolfsonian Public for, Humanities for Lab you. for joining us. Thank you for you. Sorry for my accent. <laughs> and <laughs> Not at all. Not at all. No, hope thank you very much. Hope to come back soon in, in Miami. Oh, and we are really, really waiting to see you again in the flesh. Okay. Allora, and please give um, our best to uh, to Gianni, your colleague and co-curator, Tatiana, and uh, we look forward to seeing you again. Okay. And now the time for me to just tell our audience uh, that next week, um, Ana Menendez, our colleague at FIU, is going to chat with Lisette Mendez. Lisette Mendez is director of programs for the Miami Book Fair at Miami-Dade College. She was born in Cuba, but grew up in Miami Beach where she still lives. She drives around with a trunk full of books and she'll try to give you some at the slightest provocation. So come back and join us next Thursday, June 11th at 10 a.m. We'll hope to see you then. Until then. Ciao. Ciao.